The following program is based on actual true stories on the high seas. These true stories are fish stories. to those that yearn to travel here. But for those who want to fish here, this is paradise. It's the smallest blue marlin tournament in the world. Five boats by invitation only. Good morning, good morning, Tark captains, Tark crew, Tark anglers. Welcome to Tark 29. I'd like to ask the great spirit to watch over and protect us this week, to bring us great fishing, to keep the aloha spirit in this tournament for many, many more years to come. Start fishing, start fishing, start fishing. Captain B.C. Crawford and screen actor Rick Fitz have teamed up today. Amazingly, these two meet up to fish only one day a year, every September, for the past 10 years. And it seems that magic always happens. The Sea Genie heads south to Kilo Sector. They're just a couple of miles offshore. What comes knocking on their door is a monster. to witness is a rare bird's eye perspective of a Pacific blue marlin hooked up in battle. Good job, Rick. Where am I? Is this there? We're using a little technique now. Lift up and crank down. Lift up and crank down. Yeah. dead weight on the end of this line. It's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up now. But it's still pretty deep. 
But you got it coming now. This fish didn't make it. They'll pull it into the boat. It'll make a meal for many. Really happy for BC and his crew. And that was the first time I felt like a fish could have pulled me out of the chair. <laughs> hey, Rick Fitz has always been my favorite. Of all the guys, Rick's always been my favorite. Captain Dave Crawford and his crew make a course to Red Hill in Sierra Sector. On board today is birthday girl Mary Green, a Kona resident and former basketball standout at the University of Idaho. She's a mom and a wife. Her birthday wish, tag and release her first marlin today. Hard and fast, boom. Mary takes the smart approach of keeping the line tight. Nice job, baby. And finessing the fish with proper technique. Doing a great yeah. job, man. That's awesome. What a birthday present. It's all over Tori and Mimosa. <laughs> Very athletic for him. It's a successful tag and release and a catch of a lifetime. Hey, hey, how do you feel? It was awesome. My first marlin. It was an amazing birthday. It was perfect. Coming up, the weigh-in. Today was a great day. <laughs> and it's a dandy. Plus, Ken tangles with a feisty beast oh. when Marlin Quest continues. Marlin Quest is brought to you by Airmar Technology, the leaders in chirp transducer technology, and by the Royal Kona Resort, an oceanfront landmark in the heart of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. You've already made a great choice in electronics. Now, achieve sonar superiority with an Airmar chirp transducer. Advanced chirp technology that can find them in wrecks and find them in the depths. That's sonar superiority by Airmar that it's not going to fail. And no matter what tournament it's in, no matter how much that money it in, I can lay my head down on that pillow at night and go, this is the finest hook money's ever built and technology's ever had. It's a calm day on Kona's smooth waters. Today's mission, catch and release a Pacific blue marlin. To do that, it's a trip to the fertile grounds on the ledge in Bravo sector. It's a powerful bite on the long corner. For 20 minutes, they never see the fish. They never do anything. It's one of those bashful types.
25 minutes in, Ken's feeling the heat. He's fought this fight almost a thousand times before. This fish doesn't make it. So they'll take it back to the weigh dock and process it where it'll feed many. The lure. It's the one thing that lures or attracts the fish to your hook. As fishermen, we take a lot of pride in not only the design and shape of our lures, but also getting them skirted, rigged, and ready for that big day on the water. The reason we skirt the lure is to add more motion to the lure, make it more realistic, more like the bait or prey of the marlin you're trying to catch. There are two main types of material we use for skirting. There's vinyl and there's rubber. We use rubber on small lures and jets just because the heavier rubber holds the bullet shape better in the water. We use the vinyl on bigger lures and slanted heads because the lighter vinyl material lets the lure's action be more lively. So here's how we apply the vinyl skirting. We get the lure just basically just the head. We take our nice piece of vinyl, go ahead and wrap it around the lure to get the size of the vinyl we're gonna be working with. Once we get to the edge, we take our pin, we give it a little mark, is where we're gonna to start to make our cut. Once we have our vinyl cut, we'll end up into a piece approximately about this size, which as you can see fits directly around the lure, just perfect where the seam's coming together. This is the longest, probably the most tedious part of the whole deal, putting our legs and then cutting them off. Once we get our lines all done, a little bit somewhat like this, we take our scissors and we start cutting each one of the legs. By drawing it on there, it just makes the lines a lot more uniform and looks a little bit cleaner. Once we get the legs of our vinyl all cut, as you can see it looks like this, completely different from what we started with. Now we go ahead and we begin to build our lure. We take our skirting material again, and again we go backwards, it's kind of a weird concept, but we're gonna take the vinyl, put it right back on. We're gonna bring her all the way around so the seams touch, and then we take our floss here, dental floss and rubber bands is probably the most important objects on charter boats. And we go ahead and give it a good wrap around the post. We wanna make sure it's pretty tight. Now once we have the skirt on there, we basically peel it all the way back down like a banana. Now we have the lure skirted, ready to go. Pretty easy and it's a lot of fun to do. There's a lot of tackle shops that make pre-rigging an option, but by doing it yourself, you have a much wider range of choices. And personally, there's no better feeling than having that hard work turn into a successful day of fishing. Today was a great day. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Every fish is different. It was the first time I felt like I was going to be taken out of the sea. A fish that doesn't win the fight can serve as a fond inspiration for celebration. That's a really big fish. <laughs> it's a part of the big fishing culture here of both men and women. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why it's almost like being in love. Coming up, one of the biggest fish ever. I think that was just over two and a half hours. Uh, we never had the fish close at any point. I had lead her three times. First two times I couldn't hold her. Right at that point we finally decided we have something special on here. Quest is brought to you by Airmar Technology, the leaders in chirp transducer technology, and by the Royal Kona Resort, an oceanfront landmark in the heart of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. At Release Marine, our custom woodworking facility specializes in handcrafted sport fishing equipment and yacht furniture. Quality, durability, imagination. Release Marine. Always lead, never follow. 
I bought, you know, every single brand of manufacturer's hooks and I laid them on top of each other. And then I realized over the last 40 years of sport fishing, we have not moved the needle at all on our hookup percentage. Kunawai is uh, a special place. Uh, there are other places in the world that maybe hour per hour you get more bites, but they might be sailfish, they might be smaller fish, or some nice blue marlin. But over the years, it's been pretty much proven that this place, as far as your actual fishing time, because you don't have to travel very far, um, you have a chance of a thousand pound marlin at any point, you, at, at, if nothing else, right offshore. This was a unique situation, the fact that uh, I was on a, a different boat, Black Bart, was next to us. We both didn't do very well that day. And we both left the grounds and started heading back at, at about midday. And all of a sudden, right next door to us, a black Bart hooked this nice fish. And in a matter of probably a half hour, Bart called us and said, is there any chance you can drop Fran off? We have an extremely large fish on. I jumped on and I asked Bart exactly, you know, what are we dealing with here? Because the fish really didn't jump much. It jumped one jump way away from the boat. And he didn't really know how big it was either. I asked them what size hooks we had on the lures and what kind of lure and all that because, again, I wasn't involved with it on the front end. Got all the knowledge and then we, we started after it. When it was all said and done, I think, I think the fighting time was just over two and a half hours. Uh, we never had the fish close at any point. I had lead her three times. First two times I couldn't hold her. Right at that point we finally decided we have something special on here. My previous biggest fish at that point was 902 pounds. So that was my benchmark. People knew that we had something special. One of the captains called me and said, how big? And I said, it's over a 1,000. How far of a 1,000? I don't know. When we got to the Kailua Pier, there was lots of people. And as it went up, I, re I remember just, in my memory, just being as wide as wide could be. The length wasn't an issue. It was just, it was fat. The head was fat, the body was fat, and she carried the weight all the way up. And as it went up, I remember saying, oh my god. The fish was so heavy that it was the tail was coming off. So we had to lower it back down, and we could not put it back up. We weighed the, the rope. The rope was seven pounds. So the actual weight that's official is 1,649 pounds. That was the 1,656 less the rope. But the existing world record was you know 300 pounds less than that, and it was complete you know jubilation. Coming up. Ken Corday weighs in a heavyweight, and one of TV's best daytime drama composers conducts his own Marlin Symphony. You've already made a great choice in electronics. Now, achieve sonar superiority with an Airmar Chirp Transducer. Advanced Chirp technology that can find them in wrecks and find them in the depths. That's sonar superiority by Airmar. Captain Jeff Fay is a 50-year veteran on these waters. He plots his course south, with two special lures being dragged on the long and short corner, the Butch Cheese Straight Runners. I'm in Mark and Thing on the straight. There's a double hookup. But it's short-lived. Brent grabs the rod right before one marlin throws the hook. Now, there's just one marlin to contend with. When he's not battling Pacific Blue Marlin, angler Brent Nelson is composing dramatic music for the daytime drama, Days of Our Lives.
It's an aerobatic display that ends quickly. Brett Fay wires the fish as Butch Chi gets the tag in. This marlin is released in good health. Score one for the crew of the Humdinger. It's a flag-raising moment for the crew of the Ihu Nui and angler Ken Corday. This is one big fish. It's a nice moment with the guys for fish tails and soon-to-be cocktails. Fishing gives one the opportunity to form special bonds with your friends. A fish like this will inspire hours of conversation over a good meal and a toddy or two later on tonight. <laughs>